Hey there guys and welcome back to another FPV Guide video. As you know, this week I'm hanging out in a drone 2017 and looking at things that's relevant to what we do as part 107 pilots. Flying search and rescue, cinema work, commercial video work. Mm -hmm. And with me here is John McBride mm -hmm. of Rocky Mountains Unmanned Systems. And of course, I'm Bo Lorenzo, the FPV Guide. One of my first thermal cameras were a towel. Mm -hmm. Then it became a view. Mm -hmm. And then earlier this year, it was supposed to have become a GoPro. Right. It didn't become a GoPro. Right. And so this is what we're used to using. And then what we do, do is we buy ourselves an FPV camera and put it next to it and put a little antenna on it. Yep. And now we're ready to fly. Yeah. So there's two, you know, coming up with some ideas how to integrate this into a drone, into a bird, and this is kind of the DIY type setup, right? I mean, that's what this is. So if we add an FPV camera, we're, the best we can do is get a separate camera that hopefully gives us a video feed that we can switch back and forth, and, and that's what we have. I mean, it's, it's great, but um, if I've always been doing the integration for years now, and that kind of tends to be a little bit of a small problem, trying to get everything onto everything. So that, that's kind of a big problem. Um, you come back into the new well, duo. Well, I remember last year, the mm -hmm. state-of-the-art gimbal had a lot of wires on it. Oh, yeah. It was, it was really nasty. I'm not going to call it a rat. It's it was nasty. nasty. It, was, it was... No, but it worked. Yeah, it, was, it worked, but it was nasty. <laughs> to me, I'm always like... So, and, and, so. and the duo, the gopro size duo, was an interesting concept, but I don't think the resolution really was meaningful. Agreed. So, at CES 2000 this year, 2017, the, the duo was released. It was put out. Um, it was uh, basically the high-end resolution was 160. A 160 sensor on the thermal side. Not that it's like um, 120 to 200 dollar thing yeah, for your iPhone. Yeah, and I mean, the price point was good at a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars for a radiometric version. I mean, seems expensive. It well, it's got for that resolution dual cameras, yes, you dual. know, so and no soldering to do at home. That's right. The form factor originally designed was to make it to be a Go GoPro form factor. And so the GoPro form factor, great idea. Probably if we would have done this around two years ago, maybe, maybe a year, even a year. 2015. Yeah, that would have been good if we had something that kind of fit in that GoPro form factor. Well, after listening to the market, FLIR made some choices. They did some new engineering and we're really excited about the new Duo Pro R. That this, is not GoPro size anymore. No, this is not GoPro size. So we do have that FLIR view to kind of show you a comparison on the difference in size, it is the same Tau 2 core, and we can see that, it's very sam. Um, but we have the additional 12 megapixel camera over here on this side, so it does do... Oh, so it's not just an FPV camera, no, it's a high-risk camera. Yeah, it does full 20, 1080p, and it, you know, I think it even does 4K, but I can't remember. Is the focal length of these two matched? No, because there's still some... That's a good, really good question. We try, They're going to try to get it as close as possible, but just like any of the cores that are out right now, there's a lot of choices here. In fact, there's 28 different models just for this camera alone. 28. Which means there might be 28 different models with 28 different things. So Rocky Mountain Mass Systems, we just want to tell you how to basically kind of get as close as possible, but you're also going to have that new... Um, that it's okay to have a little wider on the visual light. Oh, it's fine, you know, and, 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 and they went ahead and put in their MSX kind of, uh, um, that's that... Uh, oh, the overlapping? The, yes, the overlapping, Got the it. parallaxing of the, of the two images together. That actually is very together. nice because you kind of get natural colors, but you add the colors of oh, agreed. the thermal. Absolutely. Now, the, the one thing is just kind of given definition if you can't see yeah. something. It's just given that definition. So but thermal by its own can be hard to understand what you're looking at. Sure. Another big problem with this, as well as the Duo, there was no GPS tagging natively on this camera, so you had to somehow hook it up to a flight controller, you know, a lot well, of guys were using So if you look at the picture of the person you're trying to find, but you don't know where the picture was taken, that's right. it's going to be hard to go there to look for them. That's later. right. So they included here, and they don't have the actual unit, but they included here the, an actual GPS connection as well as an internal so, IMU. So that's a cable antenna for a GPS disc. That's right. So that can be run separately. It doesn't have to do anything with the flight controller. Really excited about that. Two SD cards right there, we can see those. Two SD cards that uh, record simultaneously at the same time. And what that means, of course, is worth keeping in mind is that you can go back later and scrutinize just the visual light image mm -hmm. without the thermal, yep. and you can look at the thermal without the visual Absolutely. light. Absolutely. But for real-time visual, you can do one in the thermal, one in the standard RGB, or both of them picture in picture. That's so coming down. That's coming visually at the same time. So that that's kind of a neat feature. On the uh, eight, there's an actual HDMI port out. 
And then we have this these uh, PWM slash uh, uh, AV uh, standard as uh, okay. standard video out. So if you're still using that an analog tool, video, uh, fat shark video, yeah, whatever you want to do on the video transmission. So they have both options, HDMI or the other, that are coming out of these ports. And then we still have like this shutter button if we wanted to use those. I mean, this there is about a shutter button. There is a shutter button. Start and stop. And then a Bluetooth connection. But we can start and stop it remotely. Yeah. Yeah, and just let me be clear on the Bluetooth because we get a lot of questions about that Bluetooth capability on this. Is that it's not about viewing the actual thing coming through. It's it's mostly setup. about setup. So it's all about getting the camera set up how you want it on the thermal side, and then as well you're gonna have some specialty features that you can probably do I'm on this side. I'm dying to ask you: Have anybody managed to hack the DJI connector for the camera and run this video through DJI's downlink? That looks. I haven't done that yet, but. We'll just be quiet. I haven't done that yet. Now I'm gonna say no. <laughs> so, so. So, so, so what it means is we're still operating with a video downlink to yes. a standalone video screen, yes. which is really not a bad thing. Yeah. So that, that that's the that's the one thing about it is trying to integrate it into any of the. You bring up a really good point here, though, is trying to get it integrated into standard DJI ships. So the standard ones are gonna be like an Inspire and Inspire Two. You said ships, the, right? Yeah, okay. ships, ships, ships. Uh, M600 though will be able to actually downlink this. So okay, that, so that so will take a regular yeah. video. Lightbridge 2, just in general, Lightbridge 2 will be able to do an HDMI option or a standard AV option if you wanted to, and you can link those down through the app just just as well. So that's likely what we're going to start with. And to move on to the actual M600 and that, why would, why I would choose that over um, some of the smaller airframes is because of this. So, Whoa, that's big. Yeah, it is a big gimbal, and in order for that to move around, that thing does have to have a little bit of a meaty, a meaty gimbal to move it. So, this is probably traditionally not going to go on most of the um, this airframes. This does fit on my Phantom. Probably not. Probably and, not. And besides, I don't want to put a couple of grand on an aircraft that cost me 500 bucks. Yeah. Or yeah. It's, yeah. Even this gimbal, this gimbal is going to be great. Will will be used for likely this. I mean, it was kind of designed around this. It's a Grem CT1. Um, but just for now, just that, that kind of gimbal to be actually handle the weight and the swinging of this uh, this weight of camera, um, and then the operational side of, of piping it into an M600 type platform, that's probably what we're looking at in a minimal of trying to get this set up on a on an actual ship. So who's the customers for this setup? Um, so, so you have a you know like I said, as we discussed a little bit about some of the options to put this on, you have an M200, an M210. So the 200 can only do one image, one um, camera at a time, and they don't have a twin setup, you know. So you can only do one at a time. You go to a 210, and that's what a lot of people want to buy. Now you've got, you can do a FLIR XT camera, you can do a Z30 camera, but the combination of those two is powerful. Well, they're, they're powerful, but they're also expensive. So you're almost twenty thousand dollars in just the end. If you're out there, you can switch over and look at the C30. You can. Let's go in and see what's in that corner you can. down there. That little hotspot. We're wondering what it is. You can. Yeah, absolutely. So, so an M210 is going to be ten thousand dollars to get the ship. Nine thousand dollars to get a Z30, which is awesome because that you can, you know, even if it's a standard RGB camera, but ten thousand dollars almost to get that, and a sub ten thousand to get a 640 imager on the um, um, uh, XT. Right. So uh, run it all together, and you've got a thirty thousand dollars ship up there. That's okay. But, but what's cool? But, but for first responders going in like to a hurricane situation, mm -hmm. being able to not having to send people out and investigate every potential leak, yep, is worth the money. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But if we can get this up onto the same ship that I use, you know, I already pipe in, I've already integrated stuff like that to run two twin cameras on some of the stuff that we've already yeah. done. But to actually have it all combined together so that these actually do operate together um, will be really awesome. This thing runs on a 336 uh, platform, is, a, is around that 6500 7000 6500 price, I think is what Randall Warren has just told me. And then on the top end, we're looking at like, Seventy-five to eight thousand dollars. So eight thousand dollars for this system, another around a thousand dollars for the big gimbal, and you still have a twin camera solution that is still less than the most expensive XT. So and and possibly more powerful. More powerful because so, we have the dual recording and 
focus. The G, you know, you have the GPS tagging, you have the internal IMU, you have the twin camera, you have the switching feed. So you didn't mention the internal IMU. So it, this also records the camera angle when that's right. shot. Yep. So we know if we were looking to the right or left. That's of. right. So all that metadata is all there. <laughs> so, so there you have it. Super exciting. The new duo. Yeah. That's no longer a thousand, but it's a hell of a lot more useful. Definitely a lot of useful. So make sure you check out uh, rmus.com of Rocky Mountain just to kind of see how this integration is going, as well as some following some of the videos after I get one of these in my hands. We're actually running around doing some tests. So we'll keep all your guys. Oh, my updated. backpack is right down here. Ah, there you go. So guys, <laughs> while I just kind of try to sneak that out through the front here. Make sure you click in one of the corners of the screen, click subscribe. We've got more videos coming up from Inner Drone 2017. And of course, you want to make sure you subscribe so you know the new videos as they come out. And we are, of course, going to be playing with thermals again sometime this year. Yes. And I need to come and visit Bo again down in California. We'll but do you some have some good breweries up in Utah. We do have good breweries. It's probably a cooler place to come anyway. Much cooler, <laughs> no desert. Ice temperatures, no 120 degrees. Yeah. That's good stuff. That's Thank right. you so much, dude. You're welcome, boss. Okay.